Well, I was happy to note yesterday the contents of the letter written by the Ministry of Education's State Department for Higher Education and as read by the PS that they had suspended forthwith the model, the model of payment and the amount of payment for various courses in the September intake coming in. That is good. That is good. That's a good thing. But I want to add to the PS and the government at large that the differentiated unit cost that the vice chancellors ganged up together to defeat because they want money to flow from government without accounting for it was not wrong. That model had survived six decades and it never made any university wreck and never inconvenienced any family. The thinking that we must always change things because we must change them is not just illegal, illegitimate, but it is also nonsensical. The new university model of funding higher education is a recipe of chaos. By the way, Professor Munavu will go down in history as a man who presided over massacre against the poor in access to higher education because he was a chair and he was generously rewarded for it by being made a chair of a state corporation. Professor, wherever you are, history will never be kind to you. I wanted to tell the peers, Madam Inyangara, I hope I'm right because I, I will never want to mispronounce a, a, a woman's name. They never forget. Women, women and their names pronounced, they never forgive. So I hope I'm right. But Beatrice, revert back to DUC payment model. It worked. We worked with it. What the government should do is to pay, by the time I was exiting the ministry, the government owed universities 60 billion in pending bills. Just pay that money. That's all. That's why they never wanted this uh, model. That's why Vice Chancellor has ganged up, so that they can go to the parents to pay. So I am asking you to advise the president that we revert back to the model, the DUC model that was working, and that you expedite 60 billion shillings payment to the universities. Why would you charge a child 300,000 shillings? Uh, Madam Pierce, even your children, can you afford three with a salary of 584,000 shillings a month? Would you? It's, it's, it's impractical. This is genocidal when it comes to education access for our children. So I'm here this Sunday to, one, congratulate you, uh, two, herald the government for listening, number three, ask you to allow your advice to be applied retrospectively. The students who are coming in in September that you have just come in to save will be saved. Thank you. But there are students who joined the first cohort that is suffering under this uh, extra sensible model already in the university. Ask the universities to drop and readmit the fee structure to that class that was there. Their parents hardly can, 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 can manage. They haven't even paid that money. We must afford, if nothing else, to the poor education. We must afford the poor education for their children. If I became president today, of course I'm not becoming president now, but if I became today, I would close my eyes and mobilize parliament and even if it would take 500 billion shillings in terms of university funding, I would make higher education free for all. This is what is happening in Finland, this is what is happening in Scandinavia, already Higher education in the West is highly subsidized. Let us not punish the poor by ensuring we are putting bottlenecks against the access to education. If we cannot afford them good health care, I pray that uh, traditional herbalists will take care of them and midwives will bring the children out of their mother's wombs. Yeah, but education, government has a moral, legitimate 
and posterity obligation to afford. If we don't afford this, already we will create a society of unequals, we will destroy the egalitarian spirit, and those who manage to go to school shall automatically become enemies of those who never went to school. May my Republic of Kenya, guided by the access to equal opportunities for every child born, in at contains of values and national values of our nation, in Article 52's right to education, in Article 35 social economic uh, benefits, let us afford every child born in Kenya or of Kenyan have education. If we can manage this, we shall have a country tomorrow. If we cannot, signs are already in the air that we can go really quick down the aisle of destruction. A reform the higher education, return the old model and let our children go to school. Over and above that, let us also get back the subsidy we had for TVET, subsidies we had for higher uh, secondary education. Let us make it free in day schools and let's live in a country where all born legitimate or illegitimate shall call Kenya. Adieu.